so hello and good morning or good afternoon or good evening depending on where you are um, on this planet welcome to our ask tom office hour session on spatial technologies for developers and dbas my name is hans Fiemann. i'm a product manager on the oracle spatial and graph team it's great to have you on the call just a few housekeeping notes before we start um i have all your lines muted uh, if you have any questions, do put them into the Q&A box, please. That helps us to keep track of these uh, questions. Make sure that we're not overlooking anything. Right. Main goal, of course, of these Ask Tom Office hours is to answer your questions uh, or to help you through the, your development ideas. Right. So don't be shy. Uh, we will be monitoring uh, the Q&A box throughout the session, and we'll try our best to address all your questions. Right. Good. With that, I would say let's get into today's office hours topic. It, the, the title of today's presentation is Built in Address Geocoding with Oracle Technologies. And I'm really happy to have my colleague David Lapp from our product management team presenting today. David, I think with that, I'll just um, hand over to you. Um, and the uh, floor is all yours. Well, thank you, Hans. Appreciate it. And uh, welcome to today's session on uh, the geocoding topic. And uh, I'm David Lapp. Uh, I'm another product manager on the um, spatial and graph team. I spoke focus mainly on the spatial side of things. And so today's topic is just all around uh, how you can accomplish uh, geocoding in a variety of ways. I'm going to actually turn, since I'm going to be uh, showing slides and demos and looking towards another screen, I'm just going to stop my video and um, get on with the session. So I think uh, Hans mentioned that uh, you can actually go back and take a look at the previous sessions that we've done and, and replay the, the webinars. Um, which can be very useful. They're all different, lots of different topics that we've done. Uh, so you have the uh, link here and the instructions to go to asktom.oracle.com, click on videos, and then under technology, select spatial and maps in Oracle database. And you can uh, browse the previous sessions. All right, so today is a topic on geocoding, part of the spatial series, and for context, just the whole uh, area of spatial with Oracle Database. Um, uh, sort of a, a quick introduction for those that aren't familiar. You know, it starts with the premise and, and our understanding that, that all the information, the business information, governmental information, financial information, the information that we manage in our data management systems ultimately relate, relates to things happening somewhere. And so within the Oracle database, the Oracle Converge database, we treat location as a first-class data element, just one of the many forms of data that's part of the converged Oracle database. And by doing so, we're able to use the database to determine uh, relationships and trends and gain insight from, uh, from the location aspect of our business information and then plug that into the business context. And that's really the guiding principle for what we're doing. And geocoding just happens to be one of the sort of specific um, uh, sort of location related operations that's sort of an important part of this overall flow. So just stepping into what Oracle Spatial is a tiny bit more, you know, we manage uh, location data natively. And so that means information uh, tied to points, which is what our focus will be today. You know, points and a geocoded address is an example of a point but also lines like utility lines and road uh, center lines and regions like postal code areas and counties and trade areas and so forth, and other forms of geospatial information like satellite imagery. So they're all stored in Oracle database, every Oracle database, cloud, on-premise, autonomous, um, customer managed, all have these features. And then you can see on the right, the kinds of questions that these features allow us to answer that have obvious sort of, uh, uh, you know, business and and societal implications. So understanding how things relate to each other based on location um, is of, of wide importance. 
So taking it down to the most sort of fundamental level, what this means in the database is that we have a native data type and it's on the left-hand side. We have a table with a column whose data type is SDO geometry. That's just the name of our native spatial data type. So any a table can have a column of that type. The column name can be anything you want. I've named it geometry in this case, but it's just a column or field in a table. And uh, in this case, we have parcel property areas. And so when you manage the data this way, you can use the database to ask questions like which of our properties are contained within or overlap a um, predicted flood area. All, all kinds of location relationship type questions can be answered just with simple um, SQL, meaning any tool, application, client that knows how to talk to the database can answer, ask these types of location relationship questions. So going beyond those basics of dealing with points, lines, polygons, and queries that relate them, there's a, a wide variety of additional um, geospatial capabilities and functionality that are part of Oracle Spatial. And as we work around this sort of clockwise going past the you know, points, lines, and polygons, we have geocoding listed. And that's one thing that we're going to look at today and explain. And addition, in addition to that, there's a lot of other features. Uh, we're able to, um, to construct and perform analysis on connected geographic networks like road networks and utility networks and, and determine routes and paths through them. Uh, geofencing, where we monitor the movement of objects, any type of, of moving entity as they move into and out of areas of interest and, and, and um, send messages indicating uh, those events. Uh, I mentioned imagery before, 3D and LiDAR data. There's lots and lots of additional advanced capabilities within spatial. And, you know, geocoding, I think, is one you know, example of that and is our is our case today. Um, but if you go back and look through some of the other sessions that we've done, you know, each one of these things are sort of whole deep areas that have, you know, justify whole sessions unto themselves. You know, so today's about geocoding. So those are the bunch of the capabilities. And so how it is that you access and take advantage of those capabilities uh, is also pretty wide open. So on the top left, you see the, the sort of the programmatic access because it's just a native feature of the database. Any sort of coding level work with the database naturally has access. So uh, just direct SQL queries, programming with PL SQL, working in Application Express and Apex because Apex is just you know, builds applications on top of database content, database operations, um, Python, Oracle REST data services, et cetera. So all of the ways that you would code against the database are open season on using these spatial capabilities. On the bottom left is our no, is our no code drag and drop sort of self-service tool, which I'll be demonstrating a little bit of. And that's our application that allows you to use these spatial features that I'm talking about without doing having to do coding, just a sort of a visual um, visual drag and drop interface. And then on the right is, sort of the, is the, the really the geospatial industry and the fact that the tools and development kits and data integration packages and data providers, the whole industry supports this platform. So all these things can be mixed into a sort of an optimal solution in terms of uh, having a common spatial data backend and then a, a blend of tools and technologies to take advantage of, of that uh, data backend. All right, so that's sort of the, the just the level setting on the spatial platform itself. So now we wanna get into the, the real topic here, which is, is geocoding with, um, with Oracle technologies. So first, just to clarify what we mean by geocoding. So in, in, the, in the sort of the broadest sense, I just consider geocoding as the process that derives or determines a geographic location from some location attribute or location sort of description. And in particular, when we talk about geocoding, we'll generally be talking about first and foremost, addresses, postal addresses, uh, an individual uh, house address or property address. But we can also talk about geocoding uh, for things like administrative areas, like you know maybe a postal code or a city or a county, or even a, um, a point of interest or a common place name. And I've got like the Golden Gate Bridge, California, maybe the Eiffel Tower, the Taj Mahal, just a, a place name. 
And what these are all returning when we talk about geocoding generally and, and in the context of today's session is really just returning a point, a coordinate. Now, of course, if you talk about an administrative area like a, like a county, you know, a county is actually an area, a region, a polygon. Um, but when we talk about geocoding in the context for today's session, we're talking about getting a, a basically a coordinate for any of these things. And, you know, the, the importance of this is really to take information that refers to a location and turn it into an actual location that can be used in spatial for all of the benefits that we I talked about before in terms in terms of having that data be uh, analyzed to determine location relationships and patterns and where things are with respect to other things that are important. Um, so uh, and, and obviously just also being able to see where things are on a map um, as well as as location analysis. So this is what we mean by uh, by geocoding in general. So what are the sort of the mechanics? behind this. So starting with addresses, uh, starting with addresses, like I have 123 Main Street in Springfield, Mass with a 01105 postal code. So the process of figuring out what the location is, the process of geocoding that address, uh, as you can see, the red arrow that's sort of pointing downwards is it's taken that address and it's using a set of reference data, which is made up of street segments, each of which have address ranges on them, and basically a whole uh, uh, network full of, so for whatever area or extent you're doing geocoding, you have an associated set of reference data that has all of these street segments and their um, address ranges. And by identifying the road segment that contains the address that is being geocoded, you, uh, the, what geocoding does is to interpolate along that road segment, um, the location, uh, the interpolated location of the address in question. So in this case, we have a block of, you know, we have 123 Main Street in Springfield, Mass. And here we've identified the segment of Main Street that contains 123. So it's the 100 block from 100 to 199. And so this is like 23% along uh, uh, because the, the 123, uh, is you know a certain percentage of that overall range of addresses. So that's a that main street, that's a road segment. That's a geometry, an actual piece of geospatial data. So when we know how far along a road segment is, we know the actual coordinate at that interpolated value. And as the arrow points back up to the upper right, you know we sh we see the result. So, uh, this is essentially the, the process of geocoding when you are when the mechanism for geocoding, which is the, the basis for what I'm going to be showing today, is really based on having this reference data uh, of all of the roads uh, that will be part of the, the geocoding process attributed with or tagged with their their address ranges so that the interpolation can be performed. Now, Another way to do geocoding, of course, is that if you have the already have the point locations, you know, the rooftop center of each rooftop location of every address in question, then a more accurate geocoding would be to actually, you know, find that pinpointed rooftop for 123 Main Street, Springfield. And that would obviously not be a location along the road like this. That would be sort of an actual you know, identified location, maybe pulled off of some uh, 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 aerial imagery or something where you actually spotted where the house was. Um, but this sort of general, this is the general context that you will generally deal with when it comes to, uh, to geocoding arbitrary addresses just based on a reference data set of uh, a road network. So the they next... Could, you yeah. could, you're going to talk about the opposite situation as well, where you don't have exact point locations, but where maybe you don't have complete reference data because it's you know, some remote area somewhere. Uh, like if you only have the, the postal code or you only yeah, have Yeah, let me get the, to that next. Uh, okay, yeah. you got that on so, the list as well. All right, yeah, go yeah. ahead. So the next, the next example would be something along the lines of what 
you know, would fall, I think what Hans was just um, mentioning would fall into this category. So if you have something other than an address, and here I'm just using a place name, like a county name, or, the, you know, uh, something that, that, that does not refer to an isolated individual address that you could interpolate along a road segment, but instead have something like, in this case, I just have a county name, maybe just some rural rural area, like something like Hans is talking about. What you do for geocoding in that case is that you have, again, reference data, but that that reference data are, are basically these re the region that represents the level of information that you have. And then what's returned is just a point sort of in that area, presumably, you know, sort of in the middle of that area. So if we're to to geocode Franklin County Mass, because that's all I have, then I'm going to get a result which, instead of being interpolated along some segment somewhere, or instead of being something on you know uh, the whole boundary or something on the edge, it's just going to give me a point inside inside that area. Um, Hans, is that the, the you know I, I think what you were mentioning sort of falls under that category. Yes, it would. Um, so. Yeah, so that's the, the case of um, place name. And then the other case of uh, place name would be instead of a, like an administrative, you know, Franklin County Mass that I just showed, that's an administrative area. So the reference data in that, that case are these, you know, boundaries of, of counties. Um, but there are also place names like points of interest. So in this case, Golden Gate Bridge in California you know, that would also be a, a geocodable uh, piece of information. And what you get back in this case, again, is you'd get a point location that is, you know, sort of somewhere on that on that bridge. So this is just meant to kind of level set what you would expect to be um, uh, getting back when you geocode. First, I showed an address and then uh, sort of a, a, a uh, um, an administrative area, like a county place name, and then here sort of a point of interest sort of place name. And again, you're uh, in all of these cases, there is a backing set of reference data that's being interrogated. In the first case, it was the road network with the address ranges to interpolate. In the second case, it was those administrative areas so that I could return a point in the middle. And in the third case, it's actually, you know, a comprehensive set of points of interest uh, locations that um, they give me back a coordinate. So that's sort of the sense of uh, taking geographic or location attributes, attributes that describe a location and returning an actual location. All right, so here's it's like the the, uh, the summary of what is to follow uh, as far as what the different sort of moving parts are that allow you to do what I just described. Uh, moving from left to right. First, we start just with the database itself without any other tooling, um, uh, any other tooling or applications or, or anything. So within the Oracle database, there is, you know, Oracle Spatial is part of the Oracle database. And one of the packages that's part of Oracle Spatial is a geocoder package. And the prefix is SDO underscore GCDR, which you can see in the two boxes in the Oracle database. And people, you know, you, you see SDO, this SDO prefix all over the place. And that's just, um, uh, it's basically your clue that if you see SDO, it's a spatial thing. Our data type is SDO geometry. Um, this package is SDO geocoder. Um, and so this SDO geocoder package is, you know, it's a PL SQL package in the database, part of spatial that handles geocoding operations. Well, there's really two fundamental flavors of that package. First, the one on the bottom. Uh, so you see that uh, in geocoder, uh, there's an STO geocoder geocode and a bunch of other sort of similar um, uh, functions and operations. But this geocode item here relies on reference data in the database and accomplishes what I just described. So this is sort of like a completely self-standing geocoding in the database solution with reference data all co-located. There is also a just released eloc, which is an abbreviation for elocation, which is uh, the the name of an internal service that that we run 
uh, internal to Oracle or, or uh, an internal service that you run for Oracle tools to use. And this package eLoc Geocode does sort of the same stuff, but it doesn't rely on reference data. It uses and accesses a hosted service that Oracle maintains for our tools to use. And the reference data are all sort of part of that, that hosted service. So there's a little asterisk here. And that asterisk you see is qualified by the fact that that is on um, autonomous database only, and in fact, autonomous shared only. And I'll talk more about this in a moment. So that's the first item are the things you do in the database. Then there are capabilities in Oracle Spatial Studio, which I mentioned is the self-service tool to be able to do geocoding. There are features in Oracle Application Express for geocoding and planned features within Autonomous Data Studio uh, that transforms um, uh, the transforms feature of Autonomous Data Studio is uh, planning and working on adding geocoding capability. So that's sort of the, the, the big picture of what I will now go in and sort of show and demonstrate um, individually. Now, what this is showing from the Oracle technology perspective is like Oracle kind of platform technologies, database and database tools. There's a separate, uh, within the whole sort of big picture of Oracle products, there are also Oracle applications. So Oracle sort of enterprise business applications, utility applications and logistics applications and so forth um, that handle doing service requests and maintenance and all that kind of stuff. Those applications themselves, they, they do geocoding as well as part of the applications. That's not the focus of today. So the focus of today is, you know, just your own, just how do you get your own data, any ad hoc data, not necessarily part of a pre-built app, any data and get it geocoded. And that's really what we're talking about today. And probably could have uh, mentioned that earlier, but hopefully that's clear. All right, so let's step through this now. And the first one is just about that fully in database it, um, uh, option for geocoding. So I want to make make this one really clear. Again, geo, the, the SDO geocoder package is part of the database, and geo, and there's a bunch of operations that that it includes. I just wrote SDO geocoder geocode, but you see here in the SQL API, there's geocode, geocode address, geocode all, geocode as geometry, a bunch of really useful functions that do geocoding. But these functions, and this is what's like most crucial, I think, to to discern from this session today in terms of in database is the fact that these functions all rely on and require reference data to have been procured, you know, acquired uh, generally from commercial data providers. And there's a pre-built data model that we have that those data providers support and provide data like ready to load into our model. Any data can be loaded into that model, but it's, you know, it's a significant chunk of work. Remember that reference data are all the road segments and a lot of other ancillary information that, that the geocoding engine relies on. Um, so that's what's entailed in sort of do, uh, doing it this, you know, this way. You know, what, what the sort of the pros and cons are, well, the, the, um, uh, the, the, I don't know, I, it's not necessarily a, a, a well, the level of effort <laughs> is significant because this requires you to have to again have all the data co-located here in the database as you know locally deployed reference data. The upside, you know, or the reason, the motivation for doing something like this in part is that it's totally isolated and it doesn't rely on any external service. This could be a database completely behind firewalls with no proxies. Everything happens in a in the bubble of this database. So that's sort of the first geocoding item that you know I, I want to um, get out there. And the documentation is here to see all the all the details. So that's sort of fully in database isolated geocoding. So the next one is this new API that I mentioned, eloc geocode within the same SDO geocoder package. And again, like this is on autonomous database only. And at present, it's actually an autonomous database shared only. So it's you know autonomous data warehouse, aut autonomous um, transaction processing on shared um, shared deployments, 
And this will extend, uh, you know, it's planned to extend to all autonomous, but uh, presently it's on autonomous shared. So this one, um, as you can see in the little cartoon here, and as I mentioned before, this geocoding function leverages this hosted service, which means that that all of the, it's just an endpoint that it uses where all of the reference data, everything that's required to do the geocoding is just already available behind the service that we have for our tools to use. So no, none of that procuring, acquiring data, getting it loaded into a model. No, it, that's all behind a, a web service behind the scenes. However, because it's using a service, the database that's gonna be invoking that the geocoding needs to be able to reach that, that endpoint. So there has to be visibility directed through a proxy from the database to the um to this to this endpoint. Um th this works also as I'll show you in a moment. I mean this works perfectly fine on autonomous database and you know um and all that, but um but it's important to um to understand that that's just a consideration, for example, if if there was like uh an instance uh, environment running on a completely private network that was not going to be, you know, a private um, virtual cloud network that wasn't going to be able to access the internet, public internet in any way. Um, there's some blog information and documentation is, you know, um, uh, going to be released very shortly, but there's a very comprehensive blog with examples here. So I just want to show now, uh, jump over and show a little bit of this uh, new API for geocoding. So I'm going to start by jumping into database actions in my autonomous database. And I've got a sandbox schema here and jump into SQL. And I've got, uh, okay, yeah, I should have this one table. So the uh, the API allows you to geocode um, addresses using, and I'm going to blow up my screen a little. Maybe Hans, do you mind just confirming that, is that a good font size? Because that showing up okay? It's perfectly fine for me. Cool. Thanks. So this operation, so now like SDO geocoder, eLook geocode on autonomous, um, allows you to basically submit, uh, allows you to uh, submit address information either in what we call a, for, a formatted uh, set of parameters, where each piece of the address is formatted into fields in specific order. So it's the the um, the you know house number, street name, city, state, zip, country, um, uh, country code, uh, and when you geocode now, I'm so I want to mention it. This is a, a function. The, I can, you know, I'm I'm just explicitly putting string values in as the parameters from dual, meaning from no table. Um, so this could also, of course, just be a set of fields in a table. So I could be saying select, you know, uh, uh, address, city, you know, state, postal code from my table. I'm just using explicitly defined string values to make it easier. So to geocode this value, I'm going to run this. And what comes back is a JSON response. So it's, uh, um, and the, the blog that I, uh, the blog that I referenced in the slide fully explains exactly you know, what you submit, what comes back. So you take a look at that blog, you'll see all the details. And as I said, the doc is about to, come out very soon. But just to show you what you get here is this JSON response that has like all of the um, all of the uh, geocoding of uh, the geocoding results with a bunch of sort of rich metadata along with it. So this is one, two, three Beacon Street. And then here we see the, the resulting coordinates, the longitude and latitude. So minus 71, blah, blah, blah. And then 42, blah, blah, blah sends me back the the um sends me back the street name and if there had been any typos or little mistakes it would have it would send that back to me corrected and then there's a, a bunch of other information you know we see that this the side of the street that it um thinks it's on the percent of the way down the road that this location is in something called a match vector 
which gives you information or a, a match code, which tells you, was this address perfectly matched or was there something about the address that was inconsistent? Like everything was okay, but the postal code doesn't match the street name, something like that. So there's all this metadata and information that one can can look at, but really if you just want to get back the, the, the essentials, you'd really just be getting back um, the coordinate, which is like that main thing, the location, which is in here. And then maybe the match code, which is telling you, in this case, one means that, yeah, we were able to match this perfectly. Um, there are other match codes which says, hey, there's no such street with that name. So you're really getting a point somewhere in the middle of that city. Um, so in addition to formatted addresses like that, we also can work with uh, unformatted we which we you know we say unformatted and that's where the entire address is just in one string so here our input has one parameter and it's just the address it's not individually separated items so we can also run that and uh you know because i just supplied it you know the same information as last time it's going to give us the same same result now because what we're returning here is json Again, it's going to be most it's going to be you know most useful to be able to pick what you want out of the JSON and work with it. And the cool thing is because we're just part of the Oracle database, uh, and the Oracle database makes it really easy to work with JSON and with SQL. All we have to do is use JSON features of the database to um, uh, to extract what we want easily out of that JSON. So if I We'll do the same query, but this time I'll just show how it is that we grab what we want out of the JSON. So here we have that first uh, query. You know, so if I just highlight this piece of the query here, we have this is the first thing I ran. This is the uh, the formatted input from Dual. So if I just run that highlighted part, I'm getting this JSON response. So now uh, I like to use a with clause. Um, I could have put this entire query down here, I think into the from, but I just like a with clause. So the easy way to do this is say with X as, and then that query, now my now I can select from, from that, that thing I'm calling X, which is we know is gonna be this set of JSON. So I can select from that JSON, whatever cherry pick, whatever items I want out of it. So this is just the JSON path. And I'm getting back, you know, the zero index, the first item, and I'm only getting get, I'm only getting one item back. So you can see in the JSON here that um, I've got a, I've got one item, and then here is an array of one item within something called matches. So here's matches, and there's only one item, and the first index is zero. So I'm going to pick out of this matches thing here. I want the match code because that's what tells me match code one means it was like a well-formed address and I can, and I have a good result. And um, and then I'm going to pick out the X and the Y. So this is just, Jace just has nothing to do with spatial, this is, or geocoding for that matter. This is just how SQL works nicely with JSON. So if I run this whole query now, you can see that I can cherry pick items out of that JSON. And of course, I could round these values. I could grab other items out of the JSON, do what I want with it. But this is sort of how you can start to operationalize and, and work with, with, uh, with this stuff. Um, all right. So uh, one other thing to mention. Uh, OK, so in addition to this geocode function, uh, now, because I'm getting back the coordinates, I could obviously create a geometry from that. I could get the longitude and latitude, and I could use SQL to construct the geometry, you know, from that. But as a convenience, there's also a whoops, I mean to run that again. There's also another function called instead of just elog geocode, elog geocode as geom. So that is just going to return an SDO geometry. So here we see, and in, in database actions, um, it just shows SDO geometry as an object, but that is an SDO geometry. So if I wanted to just ex just give it, send an address, get back the SDO geometry so that I can immediately insert it, index, whatever, then, um, then I'm good. 
I can use this function. Now, it's also kind of cool to see that, that um, uh, you know, if I want to actually see a sanity check, like what is what's in this geometry, because database actions doesn't show object types, I can, uh, I can actually uh, use SQL just to sh show me what this looks like, uh, what this geometry looks like as GeoJSON. And to do that, I can do it a couple different ways as a utility function to convert to GeoJSON, but I can also uh, wrap that in parentheses and apply one of the methods, one of the SDO geometry methods. There's a series of get uh, methods which allow you to, to, to convert a geometry uh, to one of a number of formats. So there's a whole series of methods uh, on the geometry data type. So because what's in these parentheses, I know is an, it gonna be an SDO geometry, I can apply this method. And then when I run that, I'm geocoding and getting back the geocode as GeoJSON. So something like this would allow me to, you know, if I want SDO geometry, great. If I want GeoJSON, you know, great. So a lot of like flexibility here. And the last sort of piece of flexibility is the fact that that geocode function itself is overloaded, as we say, meaning instead of supplying the geocode with an address to geocode, if I supply a coordinate, it'll go in the opposite direction and it'll return to me the address associated with that coordinate, which is actually referred to as reverse geocoding. So when you supply a coordinate to the geocode function, it automatically re reverse geocodes it. So if I just supply that coordinate, I'm going to again get back GeoJSON. And all I supplied it was a coordinate, but you can see in here that it is giving me back house number 123, Street Beacon Street, Boston. So this is how you sort of go in the opposite direction. And then this is again just JSON. So I could use those JSON functions to do what I want. So that's like a quick introduction to um, to this new to this new API for autonomous shared. I encourage you to take a look at the um, at the blog, and um, you know we're really uh, you know excited about it. Now there's some other details. You see this grant and revoke, and there's a couple of steps that have to be done to entitle a user to to have access to this. But it's all in the blog, and will be um, uh, in the doc as well. All right, so the next uh, example I wanted to show was Spatial Studio. So Spatial Studio is this no-code self-service tool, and it uses that same exact service that the, the uh, that Elok Geocode uh, package uses that I just showed. Well, Spatial Studio uses the same package, but instead of from the SQL level, it's just a GUI, a web interface that lets you sort of do this all behind a sort of a drag and drop UI. So Spatial Studio, you know, itself is this free application that comes along with the database. You can deploy it to your uh, to OCI from the cloud marketplace, and you can deploy it to WebLogic server on premises. So there's a lightweight package you can run on your laptop just as a sandbox. Um, and if you you look back and you'll see some sessions on Spatial Studio we've done before. So specifically around how geocoding is done through Spatial Studio. What Spatial Studio will do is take an existing table and you can geocode it, as I'll show you in a moment, where you identify the columns to, to use for geocoding and it's gonna add a geometry column and also give you back a bunch of metadata. Uh, the metadata I showed previously, which sort of shows match code and things like that, we actually formulate that into a UI to make it sort of easily readable. Spatial Studio has a web UI that I'm gonna show you, but also has a REST API. So um, so an alternative to using the web UI that I'm going to show is actually to accomplish the same sorts of things through programmatically through um, REST calls. And um, I've got information here. You see the documentation, the blog. I'm going to show the web UI, you know, a follow up for anyone that's interested. I can like go into plenty of detail on how you work with this, the studio's uh, REST API to do the same thing. So let me just quickly show an example here in Spatial Studio. So I'm going to log into Oracle Spatial Studio. And uh, 
And in Oracle Spatial Studio, you connect to databases. So I'm connected actually to that same sandbox schema on my autonomous database. And you create what in Spatial Studio are referred to as data sets. And those are just pointers to data in the database. It, there's also data sets in Spatial Studio that are that are um, remote, like web services and endpoints and things like you know other types of data. But mostly, fundamentally, what it's about is working with data in the database. Now, I have a if I want to go and take a look at that schema that I have, this sandbox schema, I'll see what what I have in there. And you remember when I was in database actions, I had one table and uh, there it is. I have a table called my customers. So I have this existing table. I'm just going to create a data set from it. And again, not creating any new data. I'm just going to tell Spatial Studio that I want to work with that table. So it shows up in Spatial Studio and it's going to tell me here, uh, well, there's no key column. I need a key column. So to do geocoding, it wants a key so I can validate that a column is unique. Um, I still see a symbol here. It says preparation needed for mapping and location analysis because there's no geometry. So it's either saying, you know, if you've got coordinates already, we can index them. But if you have addresses, we can geocode them. So if we take a look at this table and see what we have, I can sort of see what the columns are. I see there's no geometry, but I do have address, city, state, Zip. I've got what I need to do geocoding. So I think what we want to do is um, geocoding. So I could uh, get it geocoding just by saying geocode addresses. In Spatial Studio, there's also menus to prepare data, and geocoding is one of those preparation operations that you can do. So I'll say geocode, and what it presents me is the following. Well, it's going to give me, it's going to create a geometry for the result. If I want, I can also have it create coordinate columns. I won't bother doing that in this case. But then, most importantly, what it's done is it's looked through the data using some fuzzy matching pattern matching, and it's identified which columns have address attributes, which columns have values that appear to be have the signature of, of address attributes. So it's found out that the street and house number information appears to be in a column called address line one, based on, we look at this carousel of values, it's profiled the data, and I think, yeah, that's right, that's the address. It's profiled a column called state, and there's only one value, that is a state code. It's profiled this column called zip, thinks it's postal codes, and indeed it is. Same thing for city. So it's done the profiling for me automatically to know which columns have which pieces of addresses. One thing that we don't have in Spatial Studio now, but is has already been done and will be part of our next release in, in a month or so, is the, the ability to also have these unformatted addresses where you say the entire address is in one field. So that's actually coming. Um, so that's, I don't need to do anything else. So I've literally done nothing but, but said geocode, this thing opens, looks like, you know, this is, this is good. And I say apply. So what this is doing behind the scenes is, um, is using that same service that the autonomous database API used, uh, the service that is, um, uh, that we maintain for our tools to use. It's done the geocoding, it's created the geometry, it created the index, now it's done. So now you see that that icon turned in, into a pin and the data are ready to use. Now, we could look at this on a map and just do a quick sanity check. But even before we do that, if we look at the properties, actually, no, not the property. If I go back to the geocoding dialog, I can now see that uh, the status of geocode, geocoded is yes, this is, has been geocoded. Uh, this is a little toy data set, you know, so because I wanted something that'll run in a few seconds. So there's only 180 rows. And it's telling me that 91 of them were perfectly matched, meaning every part of the input address could be geocoded. The, uh, the street, you know, house number, street name, street type, city, postal code, zip, everything aligned. And there were like half of them were that way. Partial, about half of them were partial. And what partial means is that the geocoding was done, there maybe have, was like one little aspect of the input address that was not completely consistent. So that might mean something like the entire address was perfect except the postal code didn't match everything else. 
uh, or maybe the road type was avenue, but it's really street. And there's no, you know, maybe it said main avenue, but there's no main avenue. There is a main street. Partial just means that there had to be some little adjustment done. Ambiguous would mean that there's two completely conflicting pieces of information. Didn't have any of that. Unknown would be couldn't be geocoded at all. We didn't have any of that. Um, and so that's sort of telling me that, yeah, we have a we have a pretty good, reliable result. So now in Spatial Studio, we could just do a quick um Sanity check, take a look at the data. So here, here's where these locations have been uh, geocoded. And if we go back now and take a look at the properties of the table, we'll see that there's now a new column that wasn't there before. And the data type is SDO geometry. We named that column GC for geocode, GC geometry. Uh, and just for completeness sake in Spatial Studio, you can also clear the address geocode, which will back everything out. It'll get rid of that new column it created, the, the metadata, it'll, it'll get rid of everything that, that it did. And the reason that's helpful is you may have a table that has multiple address fields in it. So you might address it, you might geocode it, look at it and realize, oh, I did the, I did the ship to address and I wanted the ship from address. And so you can clear and redo it easily in, in Studio. So that is the, uh, and, and now at this point, you know, this is just a, a table back in the database. So if I come back here and refresh this, now you can see here's my customers and I've got this column here and I'm in space, you know, I can continue doing things in spatial, but if my purpose, you know, and, and the focus of this session was geocoding, I may just now want to, you know, maybe I, want, I, I could have gotten the longitude latitude. Remember, that was an option. I could have extracted that as part of the geocoding and then work with this data in OAC or some other different tool where I'm, you know, I could be really just using Spatial Studio as an easy way to do the geocoding, even if I'm not going to do other things necessarily in Spatial Studio. So then the next example I want to show. So that was uh, Spatial Studio. Uh, is Application Express or Apex. So uh, once again, you know, we have that same theme of a feature of an Oracle uh, product, an Oracle-like technology Apex, using this hosted service to do geocoding so that no reference data or anything needs to be, you know, configured. Um, what, uh, and, and the purpose of Apex, I should mention, is to create custom applications. I mean, that's really what it's about. Spatial Studio, the purpose is not to create custom applications. Spatial Studio is just a way to get spatial data loaded, prepared, configured, analyze it, and, and uh, just like really focus on just visual exploration and analysis of your spatial data. It's not, you don't create a whole custom application with, uh, with, uh, with a custom layout of different types of charts and dials and gauges and diagrams and forms and big buttons to do different sorts of actions. Apex does all that. And that's what Apex is about. So uh, what Apex has is a whole uh, um, really robust portfolio of different sorts of widgets and things that you can drop onto, uh, um, onto a custom page to do all kinds of things. And geocoding is one of them. So Apex has this feature that will let you geocode an address, see the result on the map um, and uh, automatically. And then you can programmatically access the result as well. You can get a handle back to what the geocoded result is if you wanted to persist the coordinate or do whatever you want to do with that result. So here I have a link to the documentation that just describes this uh, item type in Apex. And then I just want to mention that, you know, within Apex, you know, you can use this item, but there's a bunch of use cases for this eLoc geocode that I showed you previously, so that if you're on autonomous and you're working in Apex, you know, you can also use what I just showed you. I mean, Apex is all about running queries and doing interesting things with the results in an application. So, you know, these are not mutually exclusive. They can work together. But let's just take a look at what this thing is right now in uh, Apex. So if I come back here and let me grab this and go to 
Apex, and I've got a sandbox uh, workspace is going to be the same. Uh, same schema, and I've got an application called test, and I'm going to create a brand new blank page with nothing on it just to show this thing in isolation. So I'll call this test two because I already have a test one, I think. So I'll create a blank page. So here's what you do to like add basic geocoding to Apex. Um, so you add, first of all, we're going to add a text field to the uh, to our region body. And this text field, I'm just going to call it address because this is the text field where someone's going to enter an address to be geocoded. So there's my text field. Um, and then there is, I wonder if I can make this, can, can move this up a little. Yeah, so you'll see, I should mention, you can see down here in Apex, there's, when you're laying out a page, I'm in the page designer view, uh, there are regions, items, and buttons. So regions are where you could just create whole different sort of sections and portions of, your, of a, a page in your application. There's a map page that can read from SDO geometry, but you can have calendars and reports and faceted search, all kinds of great stuff. That's not what this is about right now. What I'm talking about right now uh, is the fact that there are also items which are individual like widgets, controls in the page that do different things. And one of those, well, is a text field where you can enter text. I just added one of those, but there's also something called a geocoded address item. And you can see there's a bunch of information there. So if I just take that and I'll just drop it right underneath that text field for convenience. And I'm just going to name this, um, name it geocode. So you'll see that there's a little X there. This has to be configured. So the item type here is geocoded address. So this is a first class native feature. And what I have to tell it is where where the address what's where's the address coming from that's going to be geocoded. Well, by default, it's looking for structured address fields, individual fields. To make this easier, I'll say no, it's not structured. I can put the entire address in one field. So what what's the item that's going to supply the address? Well, the text field that I just created. I'm doing this for a quick example. It could you could do this in a million different ways, but that's really all there is to it. I'm going to supply a text field input to this address geocode. And uh, we'll just see what this does. So sign in again. That's awesome. Sorry about that. All right, so this is what I just created. Uh, I've got something going. I probably need to clear my, clear my cache. Uh, so let me, let me, so I think it's like messed up because of having been in here previously. So let me try fresh after logging out, All right? Let's see if, if it's any happier this time. All right. So now you, I'm starting with nothing here. Uh, I'm going to now just, now it's this text box want, wants an address. So I'll say something like one, two, three, my town here, North. Main Street in Sharon, Mass. So I hit enter, geocoding results. I didn't have to program any of this. Now, these are just the results coming back from that service. There may have been multiple results if I had some more ambiguous information, but there's only one result. I select it and I get this map, right? So that's 123 Main Street in Sharon, Mass, North Main Street. So, you know, maybe... 123 North Main Street, Springfield, Mass. And now if I hit enter, I forgot to hit interview. If I hit enter, you see that there's um, uh, no North Main Street, but there is a Main Street in Springfield. And now obviously this is a completely different, you know, location. Um, and maybe I want to do something like that. It's going to march it along. Um, so this is like, turnkey geocoding and this could all be laid out in you know nice a nice way tucked into the corner of a apex page with all kinds of other charts and and things in it but you can also 
programmatically get access to the result coming back from that geocoding. So I'm not showing that right now, but you know, that's I showed you what it does automatically, but the result payload you can also work with. Uh, Apex is also working on an enhancement to use this new uh, ELOG geocode behind the scenes with a new item type for autonomous that will actually let you sort of, uh, instead of doing these one at, one at a time geocodes with that widget, it'll actually let you process a table and geocode a column, kind of like Spatial Studio did. And the last one I want to mention is a planned feature of transforms, which is one of the um, one of the uh, items in in the uh, autonomous data yeah. studio. So when we look here, you see there's um, uh, I think I'm looking in the wrong place. Um, well, I'm not gonna. I don't have time to poke around right now. But within autonomous data studio are all the tools for doing um, data integration, loading. ETL kind of stuff amongst a whole lot of other things. So this transform tools, it's like basically Oracle data integrator, uh, you know, in the cloud for autonomous um, as a managed uh, build, build managed service that's part of the portfolio of autonomous data studio. So it supports um, sort of visual drag and drop data transformation workflows where you're going to you know put the data through a whole bunch of steps as it goes from source to target in autonomous and geocoding is one of the um one of the operations that is being worked on and that's going to be tremendous uh, that's going to add a whole new another sort of flavor of how you can accomplish geocoding um, as really part of a much broader data integration uh, pipeline. So look for that. We'll probably, we will end up doing blogs and probably another session where we'll get into that because that's going to be a pretty wide open opportunity to sort of plug geocoding into a bigger, I mean, just imagine we do the geocoding and then the next step in the transform is to do some operation or to, or to, to do something that's based on the geocoded location result. If it, if it's near something, do one thing, if it's not near something, do another thing. So that's going to be really interesting. Got a link to the doc there. Uh, so basically some takeaways. We talked about what geocoding is. We talked about how it can be done fully isolated in the Oracle database, but there's important considerations around data and um, uh, what the lift is to get that going. And then all these ways that you can do geocoding with nothing but existing APIs and tools. Uh, hopefully, this was interesting and informative and, and got folks uh, curious. We look forward to your feedback. I've got some resources here to um, learn more. And uh, if we have time for questions, Hans, that's uh, great. And uh, if we don't, uh, then thanks for your attendance. So Hans, I'll turn it back to you. Yes, thanks a ton. David, thank you so much.